Welcome to tutorial 14 in the practical RF design tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will learn the design of a low noise amplifier from scratch. For this tutorial, we will design an ISM band LNA from 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz applications. Eight steps are involved in designing an LNA. Firstly, a device will be selected. Secondly, the LNA impedances need to be obtained. Thirdly, the impedance matching for the LNA should be done. The fourth step is the circuit design and simulation. As a fifth step, layout design should be done. Then layout simulation should be conducted followed by EM circuit core simulation. Finally, the simulation results will be analyzed. In this step, Measurement and correlation between the measurements are not included. Maybe in the future we can include measurement and correlation analysis as well. For this tutorial 14, step 5 until step 8 will be covered. The next step of LNA design is layout design. LNA layout must be carefully designed to minimize parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductance. The layout causes parasitic capacitance and inductance. Parasitic capacitance and inductance are unwanted elements due to the nature of the PCB. Let's understand what causes parasitic capacitance. In case 1, the electric field between the traces on layer 1 forms parasitic capacitance. In other words, the electric field created between these M2 traces in blue causes parasitic capacitance. In case 2, electric field between traces on layer 1 and metal on neighboring layers form parasitic capacitance. For example, electric field between M2, M3 and M1 will create parasitic capacitance. Now, Let's understand how parasitic inductance are formed. The magnetic field between two ends of a trace forms parasitic inductance. A long trace will act like a solenoid. Long traces will have huge parasitic inductance and vice versa. RF engineers need to be aware of parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductance and learn to minimize or control the parasitic in the layout to avoid unwanted issues such as low gain of the LNA or instability issues. Layout design needs to be done carefully with complete awareness of parasitics. PCB layout is designed to minimize parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductance. This is the layout of our LNA done on Altium Designer. We will not cover the layout design in this tutorial. However, we will cover the simulator results of this LNA. The sixth step is to do a layout simulation. The layout simulation needs to be done after designing the layout to ensure the layout parasitics are not degrading the circuit performances such as gain, noise figure, stability, IP3 and etc. Our previous videos have a step-by-step -step guide on importing the layout into Keysight ADS in ODB++ format. Please check the videos on InnoWave's YouTube channel to learn more about the subject mentioned above. This is the imported layout in the ODB++ file format. The pins and ports are already created here. I have also covered pin placement on components pad and port creation in my previous videos. To know more about this, please check my previous videos. We will launch the RF Pro from the layout. The EM simulation is also has been done, but I will walk you through the settings of EM simulation briefly. In my previous videos, I have also covered how to set up RF Pro simulation from scratch. To know more about this, please check my previous videos on InnoWave's YouTube channel. Let's double click on options. I have set the frequency range from 0 to 10 GHz because of the stability simulation. Stability factors require simulation over a wide frequency band. The next frequency range is the ISM band low and high frequency which is 2.4 GHz and 2.5 GHz respectively. 
Finally, a single frequency is set at 2.45 GHz, which is the center frequency of our band of interest. Finally, we have to select a simulator before starting the simulation. To do that, click on simulator and select FVM simulator. The rest of the settings are standard. However, this is a large simulation and will take days on any system. One can simplify the simulation complexity. To do that, click on Edit Advanced Simulation Setup. Here, you can change the Generation to Generation 2, Mesh Domain Optimization to On and the Refinement Frequency to 2.5 GHz, which is the high frequency of our band of interest. This setting changes reduces the simulation time drastically. In my case, I am willing to wait, so I did not do that. After doing the setup, run needs to be clicked to begin the RF Pro simulation. Upon completing the EM simulation, the EM simulation model is created and placed onto the ADS schematic so the EM circuit core simulation can be done. To do that, click results and generate sub circuit model. As shown in this schematic, we have built the circuit with our EM simulation model. I want to highlight that the same components values are used between circuit and layout simulations except for the resistor R7. We have reduced the R7 value from 12.7 ohms to 6 ohms in order for the LNA to pass the gain specification. The use of same component value between the schematic and layout is possible because we have minimized the parastics. Let's do EM circuit core simulation now. The S parameter performance of circuit simulation is shown in this figure. 20 dB gain is obtained across the band of interest which is 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz. Isolation of minus 29 dB is achieved across our band of interest. Input return loss is less than minus 9.5 dB whereas output return loss is less than minus 13.7 dB. In conclusion, the LNA meet the gain, reverse isolation and output return loss specification but input return loss. Input return loss is failing by 0.5 dB. However, we can live with this because the most critical parameters such as gain and isolations are meeting the specification. This figure shows the noise figure and DC simulation. The excellent noise figure of 0.78 dB is obtained across the band. A collector current IC of 0.017 mA is obtained which is also the total current draw of the LNA. This figure shows small signal stability analysis. Through the WS probe, we have plotted real part of driving point admittance and bilateral true return ratio loop gain. We also plotted mu source and mu load. The mu source and mu load is more than one shows the LNA is unconditionally stable. Moreover, the real part of driving point admittance is more than zero and the bilateral true return ratio loop gain is less than zero validates the mentioned conclusion. Next, we will look into IP3 simulation. In the IP3 measurement, two signals with appropriate gap will be injected into the LNA and a spectrum analyzer will monitor the output. In our case, we inject 2.449 GHz and 2.451 GHz together. 
The fundamental frequency is 2.45 GHz and the gap is 1 MHz between the mentioned signal. In the industry, sometimes this gap can be in kilohertz depending upon the radio specification. The power level is minus 40 dBm. The output IP3 can be calculated using the IP3 out component in ADS. I have inserted two components because we have upper and lower side of output IP3 products. The rest of the setup in the schematic is standard or similar compared to our previous schematic for S parameter and noise figure simulations. Let's look at the data now. This figure shows the IP3 simulated values. IP3 is more than 15 dBm which is also meets our design specifications. This table summarizes the LNA performance and compares it to the design specification. The LNA meets the design goals for gain, stability, output return loss, noise figure and output IP3. As mentioned earlier, input return loss is marginal but we assume it should be fine. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I will see you in my next video with another interesting problem. For inquiries, please email pragash at innovave.co or visit www.innovave.co.